Hi, everybody. It's Kevin Raber, and I'm back for another Conversations with him. Back with me today is my friend Art Wolf, and we're going to be talking about his Pathways to Creativity series that he's been working on very diligently for the last year. Um, Art and I were together last February in Antarctica. We had a great trip on a brand new ship. Uh, lots of fun as always. <clears throat> we had some great people with us. Um, a couple memorable photographic moments, but uh, I think the takeaway from that trip, uh, I know for me was, where did the snow go? Um, we, we landed on a lot of places where previously in my many visits to Antarctica and Arts 2, we had snow on the beaches, snows on the hill, and we were walking on pebbles and bad rocky beaches and rocky paths. And it was kind of very strange to, to see Antarctica in this condition. So there is a lot of things going on environmentally, but that's a topic for another um, talk, I hope. Um, but this, this talk, we're going to talk about this series. Um, about the time when the pandemic started last year in February or March, Art, with all his wisdom and foresight, decided he was going to create a new series of, um, I guess, uh, virtual learning, and uh, that's called Pathways to Glory. Um, so, Art, I'm going to kind of throw it over to you. <laughs> Pathways to Creativity. Pathways to Glory is a movie. <laughs> Pathways to Glory. It's a, that's a movie, I think, isn't it? <laughs> yes, it is. Oh, well, you're, actually, it was pretty much probably a Pathway to Glory for you. It, oh, I it think so, so too. Well. <laughs> no, I think it was a great Freudian slip. All right, so at the end, when we talk about the discounts, you only get a discount on the Pathways to Creativity. Pathways to Glory, we're going to kind of create that one. Maybe that's a, a something we can look at for the future. Sorry about that, Art. Oh, no no problems. Where did you get the idea? Like, where, you know, you're flying home, sitting in, on a couch or reading a book and all of a sudden decided how to do this. Because you, it, it is a unique online learning experience and it's a series. So, you know, where did that come from? Well, I actually came from about 40 years of teaching, honestly. You know, I've said this before, right out of college, I started teaching whatever I was learning. One week, I was trying to teach it the following week. I find teaching very noble. And I also find sharing whatever knowledge I've got with people uh, is a way evolution occurs in culture. You know, and we're all being inspired by other people's work. So you take it and you move it forward. And basically, Pathways is boiling down 40 years of teaching, everything from portraits to landscapes to abstracts to wildlife. Whatever I've learned over the years, I have included in this 26 part, two seasons of uh, tutorials that I uh, dictated and recorded on the computer. And we, pro uh, we provided it through Vimeo. Well, it, it's it's a pretty immense series. I, I've played a couple clips of it. Haven't had the chance to go through it all myself just because I'm lacking time. Um, but you, you've you got such a large volume of images and I've traveled with you enough and I've looked over your shoulders as we sit by side by side in a cabin or uh, wherever. And you know, you've got access to all these images. And, you know, first off, you had to kind of think about what the, the pathway was in, in there, the composition or the shooting and all the different aspects of it. And then you had to find the images. I mean, how did you go through such an immense library that you have to, to find those, those images? I mean, it's just immense. First and foremost, it was delightful to do it because when other people were going crazy, feeling like they were being isolated in their homes, I was delving deep into the world. And yeah, it was a challenge to... Um, make, well, and the average one of these uh, tutorials is about an hour to an hour and a half. And I'm just talking and illustrating uh, both through words and pictures, difficult um, points to convey. And I find that combination of images and the verbal language, pure learning is the perfect form to teach. And so, yeah, a lot of people do teach, a lot of my colleagues do cover uh, um, photography, but a lot of it is really tied to the latest, you know, um, uh, thing in Lightroom or uh, app or whatever it is. I'm still comfortable and capable of teaching 
from art, from the uh, compositional point, covering light and color and all the things that I've learned over the years through being a fine art major at the University of Washington and spending two years uh, training as a teacher. So I'm combining my history with my love of photography. And that was the skeleton from which I just, I started with five or six concepts as tutorials. And as they expanded, I kept like an amoeba, breaking them into smaller uh, lectures that expanded into those hour and a half uh, tutorials. So it was a very organic process that I became so dogmatic on getting to. I couldn't wake up fast enough in the morning to get on the computer and just dive deep into the archive. And you're right, there's millions of images from which I chose to illustrate these points. Uh, you know, one of the things that, um, you know, and I've sat through a, a ton of your lectures, obviously, since we've traveled to many corners of the world together, I was just thinking, God, we've been from Australia, Tuscany, a marvelous street shooting experience in Rome, Antarctica, Greenland, I mean, all sorts of places. And um, I, I've always admired the way you can articulate to the attendees of the workshop how to see. And what I saw in, in part of this pathways to glory, you know, creativity, is the fact that you, you did such a, a great job um, articulating an image. Um, and part of this is what you, I think you learn from your images at the same time. For example, I've seen in a series, and you'll see this several times in the series, where you know you got a big overall shot of something. Um, could be the, the Yellowstone cool or um, some of these other shots that you take. And um, you, you do it overall, but you also, and, and of course, this is one of the things I tell a lot of people really, is that art is a master cropper because you know, what happens is when you look at one of these images, you automatically see what maybe could be done maybe the next time you shoot or what you can do just by cropping the, the image you have. So this is something that I found very interesting um, in this series is watching how you show an image and, you know, it's an image of something and many people will just shoot that way and be happy with, but you were able to find segments and, and corners and uh, parts of the image that completely changed the way you saw the picture. And, you know, I've watched you do this. For a clarification though, when you're saying I'm cropping, I'm cropping with the camera. In other words, I'm like seeing the scene within the scene and zooming in on it with the lens. I also crop after the fact, after I've captured a composition, I may uh, crop an image, but I already at the time, at the inception of capturing it, know I have to crop it simply because I've got to get in. And maybe there's a limitation about the particular lens I have or the physicality of getting closer to the subject. But then if I'm going to crop after the fact, that I'm, I'm going to make the initial image croppable. In other words, I'm using lower ISOs, tripods, mirror lockup, all those kind of things that enable me to crop effectively into an image. Having stood with you on so many locations doing this and watching this, um, I, I kind of coined the phrase picture in a picture because you take this overall picture and you, know, you can zoom into the branches of something or you can zoom into a, a corner where the picture doesn't necessarily show what the picture is of. So you've got this big picture, say a waterfall. And, you know, nice picture, you got it, you've documented, 100 people have that image. But not too many people have the image of when you zoom in and get the water moving through the frame or, you know, you look off to the right or left with a, a long lens and you find these other images. And so, you know, I've kind of coined the phrase because I, I follow your your discipline. Um, how could I not after watching what you've always done with these? And um, I call picture in a picture. And you can coin that phrase if you want. But it's... Well, you know, and that's definitely uh, covered in these lectures. But I also talk about, you know, I, I shoot so many different genres, but also different perspectives. And I'm covering it in all these different tutorials. But, uh, you know, I may dwell for the better part of one of these tutorials and shooting the big picture, you know, shooting wide angles and using direct, uh, directing the eye and, and uh, leading lines and all those kind of things that have become part of our terminology. And so 
there are a lot of times where the, the big picture is better than that vignette. And then there's other times, as you say, and I show that uh, less is more, that sometimes it's the tighter, more graphic, simple image that conveys the subject much more clear than all the other things that might be included in a wide angle. So, you know, there's just multiple ways to approach a subject. And I try to cover all of that. You know, I could not, in other words, do a 27th tutorial at this point because that well has run dry. I think over the two years now, or the two seasons that I've created all these different tutorials, I have basically covered everything that I have learned and done as a photographer. And if there's something that I'm missing, it's not for wanting uh, lack of trying. Well, you know, I, I, to, to all my readers and the viewers of this, um, I think Art makes a, a good point. Literally right now, while we're still housebound or, you know, aren't traveling internationally or doing anything, if your inspiration, first of all, there's three things I, I pull out of this. There's an inspiration from seeing the photographs. There's a learning as far as the way you describe what you see, because you take each scene and you explain what you see and you talk about this and the different possibilities along the way. And then, you know, the third, when you, you combine this all together, um, these are things that you take out into the field. And, you know, if you think and slow down just enough, you know, you automatically start going, well, God, let me, you know, zoom in or do this or take a second picture and play around and, you know, use and, and work with a scene. So, um, I think it's, it's, I know every time I've been with you or I've watched these or heard one of your lectures, I always walk away with some notes and I do have some notes from this series that, um, but, you know, I'm ready to see differently. And then I'm also, I think more than anything else, really inspired to get out there and, you know, you know try those things. I mean, uh, after watching one of the, well, I guess maybe two of the, the episodes, I ended up going out to this giant cemetery we had and, you know, you can take these big, broad pictures, but I found so many other things. And of course, I want to probably run out there later on today, because I, I don't know where, if you've had giant snow, but we've had, you know, 16 inches of snow almost here. And, you know, it's just beautiful out. So I'm going to go exercise my creativity with a lot that I've picked up from, from your series. Yeah, you know, the, we did have about 12 inches. Uh, and uh, true to form, within 48 hours, it was starting to go away. But... I also got out in my Japanese garden and shot that Zen clean, fresh snow moment and uh, on the ponds and the waterfalls and the bonsai trees. So yeah, I had a ball doing that. I do wanna uh, say that with this series, my intent is to expose people to a lot of different thoughts and to inspire them and make them want to get out, whether it's, traveling to a nearby park or national park or simply walking the neighborhood. I'm providing ideas and inspiration for that with a knowledge that a lot of people are going stir crazy. So what better time to sit down and really dive deep into uh, photography, composition, aesthetics, and imagination than now. And then as we start to open up, as people become vaccinated and feel like they can start to breathe again. I have got a series of workshops that I've announced on our website starting in a month, and we're going all the way up and down the coast, uh, Oregon, California, uh, Sedona, Arizona. And so if people take this workshop, this series of workshops on uh, creativity, then it really preps them for being in the field with myself. And so, you know, there's always an agenda and certainly that's the agenda. And I like honestly taking pictures for my own gratification and my own spirit and psychology. I love doing books, but I also love taking small groups of people and seeing their eyes and their imagination light up as they're getting shots that they were not thinking of prior to the workshop. I mean, you've, you know that. And so it's highly rewarding as a teacher and a communicator to be able to do that for people. And it's quite extraordinary to see. We, we watch it in Antarctica a lot just because Art and I have been there dozens of times. And when you see some of the people land on the beach the first time and you know see what they can see there, I mean, visually speaking, they're overwhelmed. I mean, so we spend a lot of time 
uh, going around and saying, well, did you look down at your feet or did you, you know, see this piece of ice, you know, with uh, the feather stuck in it? So sometimes, you know, this is the whole thing is to be able to slow down, see things, look around and discover new things that you haven't seen before. Um, Art and I did a trip into the Kimberley, um, Australia, and I, this, this one moment, I mean, still sticks in, in my head as we landed on this uh, beach and it had seaweed along, you know, the tide line and so forth and gigantic rocks and all sorts of big landscapes to shoot. And Art kind of, you know, walked all over the place and just bent down and just started moving some things around, uh, which was a lot of seaweed. And he started creating these marvelous abstracts. And, you know, it was just like everybody had to go over and see what art was. And I have a picture somewhere. If I can find it, I'll try to stick it in here. But, you know, you got art crouched down, moving the seaweed and taking these pictures. And there's a whole circle of people around them. And then 10 minutes later, everybody's off moving around seaweed and shooting pictures. But they all got a chance to understand and see, number one, the contrast between the seaweed and the sand and the textures and all the things that went along there. And, you know, just pushing things around a little bit that changed the image. And what it did when we looked at and got back on the boat is you had images that you recognized, but you had to stop for a moment to understand what it was that you saw. And I think that's one of the, 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 the great testaments to a good photograph is, especially in a day of uh, swiping and you know moving fast through the computers and Instagrams and all these things is that when you find an image, all of a sudden you have to stop and look at it and maybe pinch it in or, you know, go up to it and look at it if it's hanging on a wall and discover what that image is all about. And that was a day you really changed my life that day. And I, that's the kind of thing that you do in this series, too. Yeah, I mean, if you think about it, if, if there's a beautiful picture of Mount Rainier or the Grand Tetons or the Grand Canyon, for that matter, you look at it and it may have beautiful light and you respond to it on one level. But if you shoot a shot that absolutely demands the curiosity and the imagination of the person looking at the image, that you connect them on a different level and they have to put some brain cells into what they're looking at, you're involving them in and on that process. And it becomes much more connective to people. I often, and in that particular case, out there on that beach out of Broome, Australia, I was channeling Pablo Picasso, or at least that was my attempt, because there is a Pablo Picasso uh, painting uh, that has all these swirly lines and the collective then becomes quite a uh, beautiful abstract. And I was thinking about that painting as I was arranging these desiccated little curled up lines of kelp. And I do remember uh, one of our participants early on said, watching me move things was, isn't that cheating? And I was like, <laughs> wow. You know, if, if I'm shooting a mountain and I'm moving a lake into the foreground, yeah, I would call that a really ridiculous thing to do and creating fantasy. And it would require some sort of notification that was done. But in the case of creating an abstract like that, where everything's intentional and you're building a composition, no, unlike not unlike what Picasso is doing with the brushstroke, how is that uh, cheating? And is by asking that question, then are you making the statement that photography is not art? It is just purely a uh, recording the natural world. And in many cases, that's exactly what it is. But there's an entire world of creating art as well. And so in Pathways to Creativity, I cover all those different angles. So photography is a lot of different things. It's just not one medium and it's not one idea. It's multiple concepts and different points of view. And I think we, we need to remind everybody is that <clears throat> you shouldn't worry so much about what the rules are, what somebody says you should do or you shouldn't. As the artist, you're the one that you have to make happy. I mean, don't even think about making other people happy. First off, if you take a shot and you like it and you're happy with it, mission accomplished. And, um, you know, I think that's a, a very important consideration. You know, these days, too, there's so much photo manipulation going on in there. You call it, you know, kind of fantasy photography. But so I know you've seen the same ones I have where we photograph these great landscapes. And we've been to that landscape and go, that stuff's not there. You know, that's not the way I remember seeing it from that location. 
and you know, there's a lot of things being done. There's a lot of manipulation of lights and darks and uh, luminosity and all that stuff, which is fine because that particular artist is making a beautiful piece, but you know, heavily manipulated versus you know not. So I think there's two parts. I mean, you got to see the image, or if you're really into it, you know, you can do a lot in post processing to take that image, you know, a, a little bit further in all. And, you know, the other thing that comes to mind, and I know I get this a lot these days, um, is the word contemplative photography. And, uh, you know, I've watched people go out and set a tripod up and spend a half hour, 45 minutes trying to get the perfect shot. And, you know, working with you and the way I work, I don't have that kind of patience. I mean, there's some days where I know there's an image I want and I might go out and set it up and compose and either wait for the, the right timing or something to come. But I'm a fast contemplator. You know, I, I don't waste time. And then I see the same with yourself. You you see things, you kind of photograph them and, you know, you move on and catch another way and another way of it. And uh, you're kind of very prolific in some ways. It, how do you feel about that contemplative thing? Yeah, for me, if I don't see it in the first five minutes, I'm not going to see it. And so I move on and find something I do see. And it's not that what you're referring to doesn't work for some people. Maybe they they don't see it and they it does take that much time to start to really analyze what's in front of you. But, you know, you're looking at uh, 40, 40 to 50 years now of doing this. And all the bad pictures, for the most part, have been taken and thrown away in my archive. And so now I'm at that point where I'm seeing the shot faster and faster and faster, getting it and moving on. And yeah, you know, that's just the way we, we've evolved. Our sight and our responses are getting honed in on a faster level than ever before. You know, I have a son that's in, in special forces, as you know, and one of the things he does and he says is it's always train, 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 you know, practice, practice, practice. And I guess maybe because, you know, I'm getting up to the senior citizen level and a higher degree. And um, I have spent time with you and so many other people that, you know, I think, you know, we train our eyes and we train our brain to possibilities. You know, there's sometimes where I see things and I photograph them a couple different ways. And sometimes I see things and go, I know what I'm going to do with this when I get it in to my, my processor at the end. But um, you know, I'm, I move pretty quickly and I, I have a lot to thank you for that because I've learned how to see a lot better as a result of hanging with you and of course and several other photographers that I spend time with. But um, I think the whole point is with the creativity series that you're, you've, you've done is that it's a training process. And by watching it, you get inspired, you get trained and next time you see these things, you remember what you saw and you know, it becomes your pick. Yeah, I mean, I've put a lot, I mean, I've put in countless hours of thought into this process. I've drawn from tens of thousands of images. I mean, of course, I've got a million plus in my archive, but, you know, it, I didn't take it lightly and I didn't bring it to the, uh, to the public uh, without really fixating on it. And the people that buy the series will undoubtedly move their own visual eye and intellect forward. I mean, I, I believe that I have to stand I by I guarantee that. it. You guarantee you'll do that from that series. If you, if you don't come back with it, you know, there's something wrong as a photographer because you'll be truly inspired by the images and, you know, the words that art puts behind it. Um, you, you'll feel like you know, he's sitting next to you. And um, I've sat next to you many times when we talked it all out together. So uh, one, one last thing, and then you know, we'll kind of close this out here. But you know, it, it's one of the things that working with you over the years is you, know, you, you don't sit still. Well, we go out and we go through these cool shots and, and, and sessions with outdoors or whatever. You work on your images right away. I mean, you, you're almost manic. I don't even know if that's the right word to use, but you know, you, you get those, you're, you're doing fast editings, you're, you're calling your images, you know, you're doing fast, you know, edits on them as far as um, any corrections that have to be done. And before you go to bed, you know, you, you've got a whole bunch that are already where they have to be. Now, it doesn't mean they're finals all the way because, you know, you'll work on them when you get home. But I think this is really important too, because it also, I know when I sit next to you and do the same thing, 
not only am I more ready for tomorrow, but I've seen things and go, God darn, I could wish I, if I see something like that, I'm going to do this differently or do that differently, or, you know, how, how I might shoot it, or, you know, maybe I'll just switch to the 100 to 400 tomorrow and see everything through the 100 to 400, because, you know, it's got that kind of feel to it. So um, that's something also I've learned from you is, you know, don't waste a lot of time. Historically, when I switched from film to digital, I remember I went to Africa. I had a couple safaris with clients and I every day I was shooting like one to two thousand images. I wasn't doing any editing. I was casually looking at the photos and then I brought them all home, uh, gave them to my staff. They uploaded it into our di our brand new digital archive. And that edit still is unedited. And to find photos within that group is much more laborious than what I do now, which is, for instance, I was just in Kenya two weeks ago and I shot, I would say 9,000 images. And by the time I landed back in Seattle, I had boiled it down to 1,200. So I am uh, methodical and I'm ruthless on getting rid of images that could be perfectly fine, but if there's three or four better ones, I don't need that fourth, fifth, sixth one anymore. And so I just delete them, get rid of them, streamline the process, and it's the only way. Now I can bring them in because if we keep throwing money into more storage space, which we're all we're doing anyways, it's it counterproductive down the road. It's an inefficient way of running an archive. And so, and nobody on my staff wants to edit. None of them feel comfortable um, really uh, getting rid of an image. So it falls upon me and I've become that ruthless. And you've seen it every oh, day oh, that I shoot. Yep. By the time, you know, by the time I'm finished and go to bed, I'm pretty much edited that day and gotten rid of a lot of crap. What? It's not really crap though. It's no. good images, but I don't need all those. You know, I'm not really it's shooting shit crap anymore. You know, I all those years of shooting shots that all were almost good, but not quite. I'm not shooting those anymore. You know, uh, I shouldn't be shooting those anymore. If it's not good, why shoot it? And so, you know, it, it may sound arrogant, but my God, I've put, you know, they say any person that arrives at a degree of respectability has put 10,000 hours into their art or their music or whatever it may be. I've got like 70,000 hours into this or more. I cannot be shooting bad shots at this point, nor should that be expected. It's funny you bring that up. I'm doing a talk tomorrow for the South Carolina Arts and Design um, Institute, I guess, called SCAD. And that's the title of it, you know, 10,000 hours. Because I just see so many of the young people today, you know, just think that they can go out and shoot all these things. And, you know, you really have to put the time in. If I look at my career and what I've done and how, how long 10,000 hours really is in regards, not just, you know, multiplying it by eight hours a day, but, you know, if you really keep track with a meter, supposedly, I mean, I, I'm in my late 60s and I'm still every single day learning something new. You yeah, know, I've, yeah. I've got a, a new camera I just got here, which is a 360 degree camera. I'm learning how to do that and how cool it is to you know do some videos. I'm learning how to edit videos. I've never done that before, even though I've got a good team that does it for me. So you know, I, I'm learning something new all the time, and um, I've, I've spent the last year probably fine tuning, understanding what and how to use luminosity mass in my my final process. And going back and, and doing that because our, our processing programs now allow us to do that right on the raw rather than in Photoshop. So, you know, we're in an age that's so great to go take pictures, the, the tools, the cameras, things that uh, we have as far as software goes. Um, super fun time. And uh, we can I agree. So I much. totally agree. I think it is a fantastic time. And the equipment's getting better and lighter, and um, it's enabling us to shoot shots that you'd only dream of a few years ago. Well, let me wrap this up. Art, first off, the series is really great. I never expected the second series to come out, which I've got to get into now. Um, I want to remind all our readers, first off, more than anything else, you need to check out Art's Wolf, Art Wolf's work website. Uh, he's got a lot of workshops. Um, hopefully he and I will do some more workshops in the future as we figure out how uh, the future is going to hold as far as uh, traveling and doing these things together. 
Um, he's got workshops of photographing bears and Katmai. If you ever, and you can do that, it, it's one of those experiences um, that will change you. Um, I know I sat on a little pebble island with Art and these the spirit just charged right at us, went right between us. And it was like, holy cow, it's like we're invisible. <laughs> but the pictures you take and the places Art gets you to, um, nobody else is doing. And I know you do an Astoria series, which is photographing a lot of the, the rust and uh, abstracts and so forth on railroad cars and different things like that. I know you and I traveled through um, Valparaiso in Chile and photographing the graffiti and the, those kind of things. There, there's so many opportunities to photograph and learn things and art's a good guy. It's one of the best guys out there to do that with you. I want to remind all my readers too that, you know, I'll put the website information in the article and I'll probably throw it up on the, the video here. Um, we'll PXL as a code, will get you a 10% discount on the series. Um, well, well uh, worth doing. And, um, you know, please support Art and, and his team by doing that. I, I do have to also say, Art, you've got a very good team, Chris and Libby and everybody else there. Um, Art would be lost without these guys. Um, oh, absolutely. Hey, um, uh, let's mention Tequila Tuesday with Art. Um, I, I do this uh, half hour program, I have been doing it since I think March. And I'm sipping tequila, talking about what, what I've been doing or interviewing people or just chit chatting. And it's fun, it's irreverent, it's been well received, I have to say. And another program is called Earth is Our Witness. And Paramal is a friend of mine who uh, works at Microsoft. He's from Bombay, Bombay, India. We now call it Mumbai. And he's articulate and we interview photographers throughout the world. So yeah, it's, from it's Israel, a great, yeah, it's a great it, uh, platform for people to talk about their work. I know Deborah and I schedule dinners around that sometimes where we can just put the iPad up on the table, sit there and you know we, we type in that we're here. If you can't um, tune in live, uh, I think the playbacks are on Facebook and um, other uh, areas. So you can uh, go back YouTube. and watch it. Definitely YouTube. So we've migrated completely to Zoom and YouTube and Facebook. And so uh, the images are coming across and we've had now about 30 different photographers and a lot are scheduled. We've got Jonathan and Angela Scott this weekend and their Big Cat Diaries are renowned. So it's really a nice way of chit-chatting with fellow colleagues and photographers and uh, it keeps expanding, so. It's not super long, you don't get carried away and uh, it's, it's great fun to watch. And as far as tequila goes, um, <laughs> you know, you can't, you can't do better than that. I mean, we, we would come back from trips and we used to load up our, our boat in Antarctica with tequila, you know, Kevin and you and me and you know, a lot of people and we would just get the shot glasses from the bar and make sure that every time we come back from an adventure, um, we toss back a few tequilas and, you know, there's not, yeah, any we're, not we're not choir <laughs> boys. We're not choir boys. Neither of us are choir boys, that's for sure. But we do know how to have a good time and, you know, have, have fun taking pictures and getting out there and doing it. Um, you know, I, I think about all my friends that keep saying, oh, I'm going to do that someday. I'm going to do that someday. And, you know, for so many of these people, that day doesn't come. So, you know, live your life after what we've just been through this year. If you You've got to start taking time and doing things that you never thought you would do before in normal life because you really don't know when it's going to happen. Um, you know, I've lost my father-in-law to uh, uh, this terrible COVID virus, and you know, my wife is seriously sick. And it, while you know the the loss is there and everything, it does turn you around not only to be careful but to say, if I got an opportunity to go out and take a picture at the end of the day, even if it's only for a half an hour to run down the street or go to a park, do it. And then, you know, I think it's really important just to do it like you did yesterday in your own garden. So everybody, let me close out. And uh, first off, Art, thanks so much. Always good to see you. I wish that we could be, you know, drinking tequila together sometime, some way. Uh, we will do that again. We will be. Um, but uh, the generosity of the 10% discount is much appreciated. I highly, highly recommend that uh, you take a look at the link and uh, get over there and, and, and buy this series. Uh, you know, I don't know about you, but I've, I've seen everything on Netflix and everything else. So 
now start looking at the, the stuff that will really entertain you and inspire you and not just let you pass the time away. So, um, Art, thank you so much for the time, and I really, really do appreciate it. Thank you to all our readers. I appreciate your loyalty, and um, uh, PhotoPXL is growing because of that, and uh, we hope we keep giving you new ways to enhance your vision. <laughs>